In this video, we're going to discuss mass spring damper systems. The mass spring damper is a classical problem in mechanics that's the foundation for many problems in dynamics. One canonical example of a mass spring damper system is a suspension system that may be found, for example, in an automobile or a bicycle. If we wanted to design a suspension system, ultimately we want to make it so that the vehicle occupants have a comfortable ride over, over a wide range of road or trail conditions. To do that, we must first understand the dynamics so that we can see how the vehicle reacts to bumps, potholes, curbs, what have you. To do that, we first need to develop a model of the system and analyze it using the tools we have in our mathematics toolbox. For example, what we've learned in ordinary differential equations. In this video, we will set up a mass spring damper system, present simple models of springs and, vi and viscous dampers, apply Newton's laws to our system, and then derive uh, the governing differential equation. Now, the suspension system on an automobile or a bicycle is rather complicated geometrically, but we will use a very simplified model. We'll use what's called a quarter car model, which you can think of as one wheel, which is traveling down the road, uh, going over bumps as as uh, as as may be, and some some factor of the car, maybe one fourth, depending on on if it's the front or the or the back, and maybe plus or minus, uh, that's represented by a mass. Uh, and the suspension spring is represented as a spring, and the shock absorber is represented as a viscous damper in this case. So the first thing we have to do is draw a free body diagram. And we will, oops, where's my pen? To do that, we'll do a coordinate system independent at the moment. We'll just draw our mass. We know that we have a force due to gravity acting downward. We know that we have a force from the spring that is supporting the car. We'll draw it in the upward direction because physically that makes, um, that's, that makes more sense to us. And there will also be a force due to the shock absorber which would be a function of how fast the system is moving up and down, or how fast the mass is moving up and down. And we'll call that FD, and again, we'll draw that upward, um, even though we'll see that that force uh, will act both up and down over time. Now, ignoring the viscous damper for a second, let's uh, look at a model, a simple model of a spring. If we have a spring that's unloaded, meaning there's no uh, force acting downward to compress it or, or acting upward to extend it, then we can call the natural length of this spring L0. Now let's say that we put our mass on top of the spring. The spring compresses, and it compresses enough so that the force of the spring acting upward exactly cancels the, the gravitational force downward. And so we'll put our mass on, on our spring, and we'll let it come to rest eventually. And we'll call this distance x naught. And the reason for that will become clear, hopefully, in a minute. If we were to draw our, or we've drawn a free body diagram, if we were to analyze our forces in our free body diagram here on the left, because the system is not is in equilibrium, we know that the sum of the forces equals ma. This always holds for Newton's uh, because it's Newton's law. If the system is in equilibrium, a is by definition zero, and so the sum of the forces has to equal zero. Again, ignoring the viscous damper for the time being, that means that fs has to equal mg because they're of opposite sign. And our simple model of the spring for Fs is Fs equals k times the natural length of the spring minus the current length of the spring. So the natural length of the spring is longer than the current length of the spring because it's been compressed. So this number here is positive. 
the K constant is positive, so the force of the spring acting upward is positive. And so we can see that K times L naught minus X naught is equal to MG. Now, let's apply uh, the spring force to our system here, and we'll need to define some coordinates that will make our uh, calculations a little bit easier. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say that when this system is at equilibrium on a, uh, we'll call it a flat road, we'll say that there's some neutral position of the axis of the, uh, whoops, stop that. There's some neutral position of the axis And there's some uh, equilibrium position for the mass. And as we said before, we'll call this distance x naught. Now, as the axle moves up and down in time, as we go over bumps, right, we'll call the position of the axle over time q of t. q is often used as the... Uh, to represent the input to a system, and in this case, the input to our system is the position of the road. So we will define u of t as measured from this axis here. It will be convenient to measure x of t, or to, to identify x of t, the position of the mass, from its equilibrium position here. And the reason for that is as follows. The force on the spring, we have said, is equal to some constant times L naught, the natural length of the spring, minus the current length of the spring. In our case, L the length of the spring is given by x naught plus x. So if we displace the mass upward, we, we make the spring longer, and so L becomes longer, minus u. If we displace the axle upward, the spring becomes shorter, and so our length L becomes shorter. So we write this term as x naught plus x minus u. And now when we sum the forces on the mass, we get the sum of the forces is minus mg plus k times L naught minus x naught plus x minus u. But from above, we defined our spring such that when we, we, when we analyzed our spring, we showed that mg was equal to k times L naught minus x naught. That was the, let me scroll up here to, to, to refresh your memory. That was how we uh, defined the equilibrium position of our mass um, given our particular spring here. So if that's the case, then we see that we can rewrite this as minus mg plus k naught, <clears throat> excuse me, times L naught minus x naught plus k, I don't know why I said k naught there, that's just a k, sorry, plus k times the remaining terms, which is, uh, sorry, minus k, times x minus u. I've just expanded out the three terms here. I put the L naught and the x naught term in this set of parentheses, and the remaining terms x and uh, u in this set of parentheses. But because mg equals k L naught minus x naught, these terms here 
directly cancel. And so our writing our coordinate system, uh, as we did up above, allows us to write the sum of the forces is equal to minus k x minus u. So now we can apply Newton's laws, still ignoring the spring con uh, the, the viscous damper. We can apply Newton's laws and say the sum of the forces, which is equal to minus k x minus u, is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the mass. But the acceleration of the mass is just the derivative of the velocity, and the, deri the, the velocity of the mass is just the derivative of the position of the mass, x of t. And so this is all equal to m times the second derivative of x with respect to t squared. Or, starting a fresh page here, we can write, clean it up a little bit, we can write m times the second derivative of x with respect to t is equal to minus kx plus ku, or if we want to write it in a uh, more, more standard format, we would write m times the second derivative of x with respect to t plus kx equals ku. Now, we've conveniently ignored the viscous damper up to this point, uh, but now we need to add that into the mix. So the force of the viscous damper is similar to the force by the spring, except that instead of being proportional to the length of the spring, it's proportional to the relative velocities of the ends of the viscous damper. So in our case, um, if we have our mass that's moving up and down, and we have a viscous damper, which is typically drawn like this, we know that th this end of the, of the viscous damper, the axle, is moving with position u of t, and with our coordinate system, the mass itself is moving with, uh, is described by position x of t. We know that the, we can say that the force due to the viscous damper is equal to some constant, which I'll call sigma, times the velocity of the mass minus the velocity of the axle. So that would be the velocity of the mass is just dx dt. The velocity of the axle is just du dt. And we're going to need a minus sign out in front because as the mass is moving upward, the force of the uh, viscous damper is pulling downward. And we drew in our original, in our original uh, free body diagram, we drew the viscous damper pointing upward. And as the velocity of the road surface, if you'll, or the velocity of the axle, as the road surface is moving upwards, then the, uh, the for we expect the force of the viscous damper to act upwards. So we need to make sure that the, the du dt acts positively and dx dt acts negatively. So we can return to our equation up here and modify it. And we can write the sum of the forces is equal to minus k x minus u. That's the spring force. Actually, that's the spring force and the gravitational force all worked into one because of the way we drew our coordinate system. And the force due to the viscous damper is minus sigma dx dt minus du dt. And all of that is equal to m times the acceleration, which we have written as m times the second derivative of x with respect to t 
squared. And we'll write it one more time here nice and neatly. We'll collect all of the dependent variable terms, all of the x terms on the left, and all of the uh, independent, sorry, all of the uh, forcing terms, all of the u terms, will be on the right. And so we will write our differential equation as m times the second derivative of x with respect to t plus, we see that we have uh, minus sigma dx dt, but when we take it to the other side, it becomes a plus. So we get plus sigma dx dt. We have a minus kx term on the left-hand side, but when we take it to the other side, again, we get plus kx equals, <coughs> excuse me, all of our forcing terms, which are minus k times minus u is a plus ku. And minus sigma times minus du dt is plus sigma du dt. So this is the final result for the governing equation of a mass spring damper system. It's a second order ordinary differential equation with non-homogeneous terms over here on the uh, right hand side. Uh, and in the next video, we will explore how to solve this particular problem and look at some of the results.